God bless you. I'm Bishop Eric Butler. I'm coming to you from the sanctuary of the Joy of Life Faith Ministries here in Omaha, Nebraska. And we wanted to just come and share with you an encouraging word today, given all of the things that are going on in the world and all of the concerns and perhaps even fear and anxiety that we have about the things that are going on in the world. And I wanted to read a scripture, Romans chapter eight, the 31st verse says, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And the 36th verse says, as it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter, but knowing all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. I wanted to take that scripture today and just share a thought about a paradoxical promise, a paradoxical promise. A paradox is a statement that seemingly is contrary to what may be perceived as common sense. Yet, it is true. Something that would not appear to be true, but it's true. And in the scripture, we have this statement about we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. We are being killed all the day long, but yet we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. This paradoxical promise then is a promise that is true despite what we think. I find that the book of Romans is such an interesting book. It is perhaps one of my favorite books in the Bible. It talks uh, extensively about the righteousness of God. It's probably the one book that talks completely about who God is and what his righteousness is about. The book tells us and helps us understand that we don't have righteousness of our own self, but it's only through the righteousness that we have through Jesus Christ. The purpose of Paul writing this book uh, to the church at Rome was really to help the diversity of people in that church understand. There were Jews and Gentiles in that church, and he wanted everybody to understand nobody was exempt, but we all have to understand we are subject to the righteousness of God. And he attempted to answer a question that was pressing to them and also pressing to us today, that with everything going on in the world, do we have to be frustrated and is there no way we can be victorious with everything that's going on in the world? And the answer to that question is yes, we can be victorious even in the midst of all of the frustration. And the way that we can be victorious is because Jesus Christ in coming down on this earth in the likeness of sinful man, his death on the cross provided a death sentence for all of the things that we are faced against, provided a death sentence for sin in the flesh. And our deliverance over everything that's going on in the world is through the power that we have through the death, resurrection of Jesus Christ. We therefore don't have to be controlled by our emotions in responding to everything that's going on in the world, but we have to understand that we have a promise of victory. Now, the interesting thing in this promise that Jesus Christ gives is that we are joint heirs with Christ. And so as joint heirs with Christ, we have to share in his sufferings. So we will have sufferings in this world. But Paul reminds us there in Romans chapter 8 that the sufferings of this current world are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. So we then have this paradoxical promise. We have this promise of glory, this promise of greatness, but it'll only come at the end of going through sufferings. This is a concept that is tough for us to comprehend, particularly uh, for some of us that are in the midst of some pain and suffering right now, dealing with all of the issues going on in the world, the coronavirus, the economic uh, carnage that's happening in the world. It is a concept that is tough for us to uh, understand. So Paul challenges us with a series of questions. He challenges us with the first question that says, what 
shall we then say in response to these things? What is going to be our answer in response to the things that we go through? And part of the answer is another question that he gives us, which is, if God is for us, who can be against us? And then he ends up with another series of questions about what can separate us or who can separate us from the love of Christ? Can anything separate us from what Christ has for us? And the paradoxical promise is that in all of these things, with all of the things that we're going through, with all of the things that we're facing, we are more than conquerors through Christ that loved us. For I am persuaded, I am convinced that there's nothing that's happening today, that's happening yesterday, that's gonna happen tomorrow or next week can separate us from the love of God. Today, if you are troubled, if you're concerned, I want you to have hope in this paradoxical promise that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you right now, even for the word. We thank you for your encouraging word. We thank you for your hope that you give us in your word. Now, God, even right now, for everyone that's listening, for everyone that's watching, we pray that you give them peace. We pray that you give them hope. We pray that you give them encouragement. Help us to understand the promise that you've given us. The promise that whatever challenges we're going through today, it's nothing compared to what you have in store for us. So God, we thank you. We bless you right now, even in the midst of the storms that we're going through. And we give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. This is Bishop Eric. I'm glad to, for you to join with us today. Be encouraged. God is still in control.